Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through three very different monster manuals that you can use to add in new monsters and new things into your games. I like all three of these. They're very different kinds of bestiaries. You might, I mean, they're very different. Um, the first one, The Forgotten Rites of the Moldering Dead, is focused on undead and basically builds on a few creatures then gives you lots of ways of approaching those creatures so rather than being like a typical monster manual it's more again it's a source book for one type of of monster the undead i love this book it's so cool so many good ideas in this book it's about 100 pages uh the second one i'm going to be covering is esper's emporium of esoterica now this is broader than a monster manual but the majority of this book is devoted to monster manuals i, I backed this ages ago when it came out and I just really never used it because I was when I was kind of leaning away from 5e. But that was a mistake. I, I, I mean, you know, even if you don't play 5e, this book has so many cool monsters and ideas to take and add into your game. So, you know, leaving the stat blocks aside, just the ideas for the creatures in this book are fantastic. Esper's been around in the RPG community from the beginning of YouTube. I mean, basically early days, one of the first YouTube channels to focus on D&D. And, uh... Yeah, I've, I've followed him all through that time. This is a fantastic, fantastic book. Um, I really should have reviewed it a long time ago because <laughs> it's so good. Um, and then the last one I'm going to cover is Iron Falcon Rules for Classic Fantasy Role-Playing Game Handbook of Monsters. This is totally free. The other two are, you know, have to pay some money, um, $10, $15. This one is totally free. In fact, this comes from the Basic Fantasy Project on Drive Your RPG, all of that stuff is free. Highly recommend you go check it out because this is 170 pages of classic old school monsters laid out in old school style, all totally free. Now, if you have other monster manuals from the old school, you might not need this, but hey, it's a free monster manual full of monsters with art for them. I mean, this is incredible, so check it out as well. I'll go through them each. Uh, these are all pretty long, so I'm not gonna go through in anything like total detail, but I do wanna cover them to the best of my ability, just give you guys a sense of what they're in here. So let's start with The Forgotten Rites of the Moldering Dead. This is by Don Stroud. This is so good. The art, first of all, look at this, so amazing. Oh my goodness, fantastic art throughout this whole book. Um, it's compatible with DCC, but again, the idea is here you can take and add into any game. Great uh, art. This reminds me of like third edition art, maybe a little bit later than third edition art, um, and that's sort of what I grew up with, and so I have a nostalgia for this comic booky style. I really like that. Um, I like these death heads, dead dancers. Uh, death dancers you see from the Middle Ages, there's lots of those sorts of, lots of pieces of art there. And a great art throughout. Oh, man. I love this. There's a great introduction here. It tells you what you can expect. And it's funny how the whole book started off with this idea of what do you smell when you enter a tomb or when you come near dead things. And then the rest of the book and its tables kind of came from that. So the smell of death is chapter one. What's that smell? Uh, with tables and subtables, right? <laughs> for what you might roll, uh, for what you might smell. What's that smell? Undead horde, war banded army? Well, you're going to roll, uh, if you want to know more about those creatures, well, then you're going to roll on that table. The dragon fall and dead dragons? Well, then you go to page eight. Great, great ideas here. Uh, undead horde, war band army. What's the horde configuration? So if it's a zombie horde, what kind of troops is it made of? Is it made of right? If it's a ghoul horde, what kind of troops is it made of? If it's a vampire horde, right? <laughs> you're talking a horde of vampires? That's pretty terrifying, but you have some great ideas. Be still vampires, 2d4, drink from a herd of cattle, are so intent upon feeding that they will only retaliate, they won't attack. Mutated vampires, howl in the night searching for blood, 2d3. Betrothed of the vampire count, ride in a black coach with three bloodless bodies. Ooh, that's really creepy. The local count rides in a black coach with d4 plus two wolves and two betrothed vampires. That's so creepy, man. I love it. And then liches, what's a horde of liches look like? <laughs> no, that's awesome. Surrounded by an army, a war band of undead. A great, uh, you know, if you're going to have a warband of undead, you got to have a general, and that general has to have a title. So cool. The Dragonfall, if you're going to deal with dead dragons and the parts of dragons that are useful, great art there. Tracking the trail of a dead dragon. Uh, Host-specific parasites, because you're going to have parasites that feed on dragons. Draco worms. A lineage of legless dragon kin that starts out small and embedded in dragon muscle, but grow very fast once they feast on a fallen dragon and can reach lengths of 10 to 15 feet. That's such a cool idea. I want to use that in my next game. In fact, my next game, my next world I'm building has dead dragons as kind of like a theme. The, the, the dragons are all being wiped out or have been mostly wiped out. And this is a great thing, the Draco worms, which are the, the sort of things that have arisen in, in the death of dragons. That's a really good idea. I'm just going to steal that. <laughs> well, use it, I should say, not steal it. Use it. 
fields of death. You know, what kind of death can happen on a much larger scale and what happens when you do that? A mass die-off of animals or livestock mutations or recent battlefield, a small church or family cemetery. Oh, that's such a creepy piece of art. I love it. Loot from battlefields, undead beasts, great art there. Really horrifying art there. <laughs> Corpse plants and fungal gardens. Weird death, undead and other unnatural creatures. Elaboration on the undead. So how, what is their appearance? Uh, what was their base type? What caused them to reanimate? How do they spread their contagion? Romero zombies, if you're going to do class-based. Uh, Romero, perhaps one of the greatest of all necromancers, believed the zombies he raised retain sparks of intelligence. <laughs> That's so cool. Great reference there. Malgor's unwholesome workers. Mummies. Mummy curse triggers and effects. Where the mummies buried. Book of the Dead and mummification and how it works. Ghosts and what they want and why they're still around and how they attack with a terrifying piece of art there. Ghouls and the ghoulish looks, ghoulish bestiaries, vampires, and how the vampires work. Oh man, I really wish I'd had this book before I started my Curse of Strahd campaign. I would have used a lot of this stuff in it. The liches and all the information about liches you want, making skeletons more interesting. I think if you took a lot of the stuff from the monster overhaul and combined it with this, you would have just really cool, unique undead every time you ran into them. They would not be generic skeletons or vampires or zombies, let me tell you. Rites of the dead and how that works. Funeral masks, grave goods, death processions, how the deceased is carried. Uh, that just makes me think of that meme with the guys dancing with the, the uh, coffin. Death barges, chariots, and wagons, the dead themselves. Oh man, I could just go on and on and on. This is a hundred pages of great stuff about the dead here. Uh, with a class uh, for DCC, the Necromancer. Um... Is this the class for it? I think it is. Yeah, it's specific necromancer spells and stuff like that. That's what it is. Sorry, not, not so much a class uh, with all of its abilities. An undead hunter. Um, where you get all of that. That's so cool as well. Oh, man, the undead hunter. Great class. If you're going to play that kind of campaign, this is an actual class. Uh, with uh, patrons, Narog the hunter. And then you get some adventures. A level zero adventure, a funnel which is awesome to have. Uh, I always love funnels, and this is a DCC source book, so it works for that. The Mysteries of the Encroaching Restless Dead. It's a really cool, like, regional encounter, or regional adventure, I should say. You get a good map here with a lot of the different locations and what's happening in them, and, and very bad things as the undead slowly start to, you know, gather in more and more and more of them. It's a really cool idea there. Great piece of old... I think that's public domain art. I think that's from, uh, from something else. And then you get the... Uh, closing pages. So, Forgotten Rites of the Moldering Dead, highly recommend if you're interested in playing a dead focused game or a campaign. If you're playing Curse of Strahd and you want to make the <laughs> Barovia feel way more interesting or Ravenloft, uh, or you just really like knowing more about the undead and making them really interesting and unique, uh, I think it's a fantastic book. Fantastic idea. Again, I'll put links below to where you can get it. Great work to uh, Don Stroud on this one. The next one I wanted to check was Esper's Emporium of the Esoterica. Now again, this is broader than a monster manual, but it does... I'm going to focus on the monster manual section of it, but it's it's the rest of it's for 5e stuff. And so you get extra races and class options, spells and magic items and stuff like that, game master advice, you get some named NPCs. But really, as you can see, the majority of the book from page 143 to 343 is just monster manual. So, I mean, I guess of, of the 350 or so pages, about 140 are not. So, you know, you can look at it as basically a 5e source book or a resource book. Again, if you're not interested in 5e, that's fine. But a lot of this stuff is still great, great ideas, even if you want to just steal it and put it into your games. Right, the class option stuff only takes up about 30 pages, and that's the stuff that would be very specific. Other than that, magic items, spells, I guess there's a few pages of feats too, and that would be specific to 5e, but the magic item shops, <laughs> different cool ideas for skill encounters, again, magic items, and the bestiary itself, most of this book is going to be interesting, regardless of if you play 5e or not. And there's great art throughout it. Um, with some really cool, I would say, you know, poetry and fiction and stuff written in here. Like, I'm going to skip past most of the class stuff, just because I don't, you know, I don't really play 5e so much anymore, and so... Uh, these classes aren't really why I want to highlight this book. They're good. Def, don't get me wrong. I think if you're going to play 5e, then you should check this book out for sure if you already haven't. But leaving 5e aside, I wanted to get to the stuff that I think is kind of generic. Or I shouldn't say generic. It's not generic. I mean uh, system neutral or, or applicable, broadly applicable, right? Moving past spells. Although, again, if you want to take these spells and fit them into a game, 
an old school game. Definitely good ideas in here. There's some really creepy spells. <laughs> Snake tongue. Um, game Master Advice for, and again, most of it's for 5e, but it's, it's, it's general and it's really good. If you know Esper, then you know he's a storyteller pr first and foremost. Uh, and he's also, I mean, uh, not to say that he doesn't, you know, make mechanics and games and something like that, but he, but he's really, really a storyteller. And, uh, I think the advice that he gives is, is, is well suited to that, uh, to that, you know, role, that vocation, <laughs> that calling as a storyteller. And I think that it's great advice to, to follow. And, it, and especially if you tend to play more mechanical, automatic games, it's nice to see, you know, the side of things, that, you know, the, the, the side of the hobby that is much more interested in telling these really grand, epic stories, or stories that maybe come out of the play, gameplay. And actually, I think if you really want to see some examples of that, you can go to Esper's channel. And early on, when 5e was just coming out, he did a series of, like, story solo games that he would run through to help teach 5e. And it was really cool how the sort of story would develop out of... I mean, he had these characters and things like that, but how, how he ran 5e early on was one of the reasons why I liked it so much. Um, you know, later on it got really bloated with abilities and, and power creep and all these things, but I think initially uh, I was really happy with it. And part of that had to do with those uh, initial really cool uh, ideas. Really good ideas for tricks and traps and, and hazards and things like that, too. So then this book has a lot more than monsters. I'm kind of going through a lot of the other stuff first. And as you can see, it kind of takes a while to get there. Because I just wanted to go through and give you guys a sense of the book as a whole. Great ideas for arena combat. Some cool magic shops and things like that as well. If you have kind of that kind of game where there's magic to, to, to buy. Not everyone plays that kind of game, especially if you're playing a more old school game. Uh, here we go. Now we get to the bestiary, and this is where I really like it. Now you're going to see again, the stats are given in 5e terms, which, you know, you can totally adjust if you, if you know what you're doing as a DM or as a GM. But the ideas here and the art that is very evocative and flavorful, some really cool creatures. The aspect of Argus, a large celestial creature. Um, the Aruapede, it's kind of like a, a, a false gold coin. I've seen that in another game, or that idea in a different game, or a different supplement somewhere. I think it's a really good idea. The Bane Swan, the Bellamort, Bellemis, the Bog, Lo Bog Lord Frog, <laughs> Brobdignagnian, Brobdignagnian. That's awesome. I love that. The Savina, uh, Charnel Reavers. Oh, that's such a cool idea. Terrifying there. The Corphage, Crawling Spheres. Ugh, ugh, ugh. It's a construct, but it's just it's spider-like, and I. I think it's very, very disturbing to me. A Nightmare Demon, a Vokasu Logos Demon, that's awesome, a Wrath Lord. Anyway, just again, going through this book, you can see there's just great ideas, really a, a flavorful art. It's done in sort of like a, you know, it's not, it's not like the line and ink art that I usually like. It's definitely that more digital or like, you know, I don't know, dr dreamy uh, style often at times. I love that, the Geode Elemental, it's a great idea. Um, so, again, oh, that's a really good one. The Estrava, a witch queen and the Inquisitor. Oh, it's a dread spirit. Headless body hangs in the tree and the cloth drapes down from her longer than any gown or robe. Upon taking a better look, you see she's not hanging from the tree, but rather she's fused to a gnarled twig sprouting from the stumps of her severed limbs. Oof, terrifying and great idea. And again, this book has tons of that stuff. Really, really good, evocative creatures that just to bring you in, especially if you are playing 5th edition, you owe it to yourself to get this book. If you're not playing 5th edition, then still, worthwhile looking at this book for the ideas of the creatures to add into your game, especially if you're playing something that you've been playing for a while, and your players are kind of getting used to the same old creatures. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of good creatures. Really cool ideas. Uh, the Old Woman of the Mountain. That's a really cool one. She's a boss monster. An orphan. Or, sorry, Ofen. <laughs> Not an orphan. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Optovoa, the Overseer. Winged Owlbears. Oh, that's a great idea. Spell Warped Owlbear. Classic. Great, uh, great ideas. The Ragman, Ridgeback Turtle, Room Worm, Sarcoid Star, Sickle Moss Slug. Cool ideas of skeletons. And again, just great, great great ideas highly recommend you guys check this book out because again i'm just clicking through clicking through so many monsters with great ideas um there are lots of monster manuals for 5e where there are lots of you might say like weird monsters 
And this book has a lot of that because it's trying to be different, right? It's trying to be more interesting and unique. There's a bunch of NPC classes which are going to be less interesting because, again, they're specific to 5e and they're more generic in terms of what you're... Those are like, you know, zealots or um, named NPCs. Less interesting. I mean, although they're, they're cool, don't get me wrong. You get some cool villains and monsters here that you could draw from and take inspiration from. Um, less useful than the monsters themselves because of the ideas. Uh, for uh, Again, for a system-neutral mindset, uh, drawing from this for your system of choice. If you are playing 5th edition, as I've said several times now, this is a great book. I mean, this is fantastic. It's almost a must-buy if you're still playing 5th edition. Um, but if you're not, then I, again, highly recommend this book just for ideas, Esper's Emporium of Esoterica. Really fantastic. Uh, I think the creatures in here just give me tons of ideas. But they're, they're unique and weird, and so it's not the sort of thing where you're going to just like, you know, I don't know, if you run this just like, a, we're going to play with any of the monsters or all the monsters from in here, your world's going to feel real weird. Instead, I would say pick the one or the two or the thing that you want to build an adventure around or a campaign around and make it this weird thing, make it a unique thing. Because that's how this book really, really reads, is unique, interesting monsters that aren't going to be typical. Um, you know, you don't get re-statted, re-flavored hobgoblins or different kinds of orcs. You're going to get these weird things that you're building a campaign around or an adventure around. So, highly recommend Esper's Imperium, Emporium excuse me, of Esoterica. Finally, as I said, I wanted to go through Iron Falcon Handbook of Monsters. Now, this is really straightforward. It's old school monsters given in old school stat blocks. It's free, and that's why I wanted to highlight it here. You get basically uh, 164 pages or so of monsters. With There's also some encounters and, and uh, treasure tables and things like that. So that's, that's good. I always like having encounter tables added into a book like this. Um, but you can see the, basically how to read a stat block, Beasts of Burden, and then you get into them. Aerial servants, alicorns, onkegs, ants, ape carnivorous, ape gorilla, axe beaks, baboons. You get the point. Classic monsters from D&D, all laid out in the style with art not on every page, but art frequently enough that you get a sense of some of the creatures. I love that bullet. Really good. <laughs> Great piece of art there for the bullet, or the land shark. You know, again, this is a free book. You would be, if you're playing old school games, and you don't want to get one of those, you know, <laughs> system specific, or I should say, uh, you know, system monster manuals that have lots of, uh, you know, has their own cost and you have to buy it and all that stuff. You get basically what you're going to get in many of those books free right here. So pick it up, right? If you want the, the basic monsters from D&D, &D, there's no reason to buy a book except for the art, right? You might get, you might really like the art, you might want to support the, the creator, great, you know. But if you're just like, hey, I want a bunch of monsters for an old school game, and I don't want to spend money on 20 bucks or 15 bucks or 30 bucks on a monster manual, um, you can get the PDF here for free. Now, if you want to get the, the print version, you can, you can get that on DriveThruRPG as well. That costs some money. But if you want to get the free one, it's just free, the PDF. You go through it. That's super, super cool. Lots of great monsters in this book. Again, it's kind of crazy to me that this is free. You just get everything that you would get in most of the other monster manuals from most of the other books. Now, it's going to be specific to the basic fantasy game, as far as I know. But that game is so basic, right? It's so much like the others. Look at the stat blocks here. It's incredibly easy to convert to any game of your choice. The number of hit dice, the AC, now it's given in, you know, uh, descending terms. Uh, but it's easy enough to convert if you want to play with Ascending Armor class. That's not, a hard, that's not really a problem. Um, at least, you know, there are easy ways to convert it. But the, but the attacks and the damage and the special abilities and the descriptions and, again, the art, it's, it's applicable to whatever you want to do. So highly, highly recommend you guys download this. Again, it's free. And if you want it in print, awesome. You can support them and you can get a really nice uh, monster manual with all the classic monsters in print throughout. Uh, thing. Now you get the uh, encounters at the end, which just different. I like how it's laid out, too. So you have the dungeon level and then the die roll that you need and then what you're going to roll on that table, so, um, or which table to roll from. I like that a lot, and there's some, it's nice to have encounters added into a monster manual, because not every book has them. There was a, there was a free system neutral monster manual that I reviewed a while back. Um, it's just like the very basic monsters, uh, laid out without much art on two page spreads. I forget what that's called. Someone in the comments, I'm sure, will remember. Um, and if you check the last monster manual review I did, you'll, you'll find it on there. But, that one didn't really have any encounter tables, as far as I remember. So this one does, and I like that a lot. So it's one of the reasons why this one stood out to me just a little bit there. 
And then you get the open gaming license at the very end. So highly recommend you guys check out Iron Falcon Handbook of Monsters. Again, it's free. So if you really like those old school monsters and you don't have a version yet, if you're playing 5e or something, or you just, you know, whatever, pick it up. Awesome. And you can, even if you just want to have another one, you can compare it to whatever you have. So Handbook of Monsters, Esper's Emporium of Esoterica, and Forgotten Rites of the Moldering Dead. Three great monster manuals that you guys should pick up. And, uh, or three great resources, I should say, not necessarily just monster manuals, but three great resources you should use for your game. I'll put links below to where you can get them. All right, guys, hope this has been interesting, and I'll see you in another video.